In part five of our overview of current liabilities, we're going to discuss dividends payable. Dividends. Well, what are dividends? Dividends are when a company gives back some of that company to the shareholders. What does that mean? We're giving back some of the company back to the shareholders. We'll discuss that a little bit further here. So it could be cash dividend, giving them cash. It could be a stock dividend, giving them additional stock, common shares, preferred shares, whatever the stock dividend may be. Now, who declares or authorizes those dividends? The board of directors. And when is that cash dividend usually paid? Well, usually within three months of declaring a dividend. Hence why they are current liabilities. So where do these dividends come from then? You know, we said giving back some of the company. Well, what does that mean? Stock dividends come from the equity section of the balance sheet. So stock dividends payable are not really liabilities and we're not gonna discuss them further. We'll discuss them in future equity section discussions. So it's really about the cash dividends that usually come from retained earnings. Yes, we're paying them out of cash, but how can we do that? Well, we've made profits, and remember, those retained earnings are the accumulated net income or profits from your business operations, both from the current operations and past operations, all added up together, so that's what makes up our retained earnings. And so dividends, cash dividends, are basically giving some of those past profits back to the shareholders. So therefore, a dividend payable is a liability created when a cash dividend is declared. So let's go over some important dates related to dividends payable. So the key dates include the date of declaration. That's when the board of directors gets together and they say, all right, we're going to pay a dividend to all of our shareholders. So that means a liability is recorded based on those outstanding shares. But another important date associated with that is the date of record. Now, the date of record is the date when you must own those shares to get the dividend. Now, there's no accounting entry for the date of record. But if you think of stocks changing hands every day, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, just different people owning different shares of companies every day, it's happening and changing. When you declare that dividend, you're basically saying, okay, we're going to set a date and you must own our shares by this particular date if you're going to receive the dividend. So you've got to own the shares on that date of record. Then comes the date of dividend payment, the date where the shareholders who owned those stock on the date of record will get paid. So you could own that stock on the date of record, sell it the next day, but you'll still get that dividend payment, you know, in that future date when they pay it, because you did own that stock on that date of record. We will do an accounting entry on that date of dividend payment where we eliminate the liability and then cash is distributed to those shareholders of record. So let's review those dates again. So let's say June 1st, 2020, we declare a dividend. To anybody who owns our stock on the date of record of July 1st, 2020. And then we will pay that dividend on August 1st. So a little side note on stock buying strategy. I know there's some people out there who actually will buy the stock after the declaration date and before the date of record, so they'll own that stock, and then they'll turn around and sell that stock after the date of record. That way, they'll be eligible to get that dividend when it's paid out on August 1st, and as long as the stock hasn't gone down, they will have gotten that dividend and maybe even the stock has gone up, and so they've got both a gain on the stock and a dividend for just owning it in a short period of time. So let's look at the accounting for dividends payable. When the cash dividend is declared, we record that dividend. It's a retained earnings equity account that we're listing to show that we're reducing retained earnings by that debit, and then we're crediting dividends payable, a current liability. Now note the dividends are not an expense on the income statement. Let me repeat that again. Dividends. Sounds like it, it's an expense, but it is not an expense on the income statement. It is a reduction 
of the retained earnings in the equity section. All right, now at the date of record, no entry, as we said before. And then finally, at the date of payment, we're going to reduce that current liability of dividends payable and reduce our cash that we're dispersing for that dividend that was declared. Now, that summarizes what dividends payable is in an overview standpoint for our current liabilities. In future lectures, we'll look at stock dividends and preferred stock dividends when we talk about the equity section a little bit further. So I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like below. Please comment on anything you want clarified or any future videos you'd like to see. And remember to subscribe. This is Professor Hungerford, and thanks for listening.